Hey everybody and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Nikon F2. In this video we're going to be, in the first video we talked about what everything in the camera is. In this video we're going to talk about what everything in the camera does. First thing we're going to do is change the battery in this camera and that is on the underside here. Now the battery is only used for the light meter. So if you aren't using a metering prism like I'm not, you don't actually need a battery. So you just remove the battery with a nickel and this uses a 1.5 volt times two according to the inside of the cap. 1.5 volt times two, there we go. Okay, so that is two of these guys. Now if you saw on the cap, there was a plus sign on it, meaning that the positive terminal faces the cap. So we're going to put these guys in that way. Going to grab our nickel or whatever currency in your country fits the slot on this. There we go. And it's just a bayonet, so they go in like that. And then you twist it a half turn and you're set. And uh, but, but like I said, if you're not using the metering prism, it doesn't matter. The, uh, uh, the shutter in this is completely mechanical and there is no meter built into the camera, only into certain prisms. So we're gonna take these batteries out because we just don't need them anymore. Next thing we're gonna do is talk about how to mount and unmount lenses. You wanna switch lenses. You can do that at any time when you're not taking a picture without it ruining your photos. Here's your lens mount release button. I'm gonna push that and turn the lens clockwise until it's free and remove it. Next we're gonna grab a different lens and we're gonna take our different lens and we're gonna put it on. Now what you wanna do is you've got the white index there. That lines up with your infinity focus point. Just drop it into place. Turn it counter or anti-clockwise until it clicks. And now you have changed the lens that you're going to be using. Next thing we're going to do is take the prism and the focusing screen out and I'll show you how to, how to swap those out. To remove the prism, which we have to do first, we're going to push down on this button in the back until, oh, right. I'm, going to, I'm going to turn this around because I'm too weak, until the prism pops off. There we go. And the way that this works is that there are some hooks inside of it that hold the prism in place. Now, we can't just take the focusing screen out. What we'll do is hold this upside down and we're gonna hold the prism release button again. There we go. And now the focusing screen just drops out. This allows us to easily clean the focusing screen as well as replace it. What you want to do is look for the letter of the focusing screen. There's a letter on one side and some text on the other. The letter goes towards the front of the camera. So we're going to push the focusing, the prism release button again, drop that in, let go of it, and if we've done it correctly, the prism doesn't fall out. Now you can either put the same prism back on or put a different one on. To do that, you just hold the button in, Drop the prism into place, and once it's seated, then you release the, but the button, and the prism is now locked into place. So that's a ridiculously simple process, and if you have multiple prisms or multiple focusing screens for different purposes, it's really easy to change them in this camera. Next thing we're going to do is load film and into this camera. So to do that, we've got to get into the back of the camera here. Open up the film back. Okay, I know it's dusty, but yes, I have actually used this camera. We're gonna grab a roll of film, pop up the forks there, drop our cassette into the cassette chamber, pull out a leader, and we're gonna look for this slot here in the take-up spool, feed the film into it. There's a little tooth in that slot. We wanna try to line that up with the, one of the sprockets. There we go. Adjust this to a slightly shorter shutter time. Now we know that it's being taken up effectively. You can close the film back. Maybe. 
had this problem in video one too. There we go. The film back on this is just a little bit tweaked, which makes it a little bit hard for it to line up sometimes. Once we have the film in the camera, we'll advance three frames until this gets to one. There we go. So go start negative one, zero, and then one. Once you're at one, you're ready to go. As you take pictures throughout the course of your shoot, you'll advance the film. Now film is one and done. So you do not want to ever open the film back when you have film in there that you're in the process of shooting. You want to open the film back to load the film and then once after you have completely rewound it. But I want you to see what's going on inside the camera when we take photos. So you'll take your picture and then the film that has not been exposed is pulled out of the cassette and fed across the back of the camera. The, you can see here how the guide rails keep it from moving up and down and then through the sprocket holes you can see those inner guide rails and when the, the pressure plate is sandwiched up against here you can see how flat it keeps the film. So you'll advance the film. Now once you get to the end of your roll what you want to do is find the film rewind release button down here on this side, push it in, and then you can rewind. Bearing in mind, you have to keep your film back closed this whole time. You cannot open the film back until you have the film completely rewound. Now, when you're rewinding it for real, you want to rewind the entire leader into the cassette. That will make sure you don't accidentally reuse the cassette, but I'm gonna use this for other videos, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a leader. Take it out. If you're gonna shoot another roll, just drop it in at this point and repeat the process, or if you are done for the day, make sure to trigger your shutter before you put your camera away for the night. For flash use on this camera, there are two ways to do it. If you have the adapter, which I do not have, you can plug it in here and then it covers the film rewind knob, no big deal. And you can put a flash on there and that gives you a hot shoe. If you don't, then you plug your flash here into the PC port. You can either hand hold it or use what's called a flash bar to have the, which is a flat bar that comes out of the bottom of the camera, screws into the tripod socket and holds your flash. And then any X flash, modern flash you could buy online today, even going back to the Vivitars of the 1980s and similar cam, uh, brands will work with this camera through the, the, the PC port. For those of you who are really into modern flashes, this is just firing on manual. So all of your flash settings for any flash you use will be set manually. There's no automatic flash use with this camera at all. Your flash sync speed, so if you're gonna use this, um, oh, here we go. I was wrong when I said in the first video that the index is that black line. The index is that uh, little white line next to the uh, prism. What you wanna do to use a flash is set the shutter speed to 1 80th, which is that red line, which is what we're at right now, as you can see. So 1 80th and slower will work for your flash, okay? And the reason for that is that this has a focal plane shutter, which means that when you push the shutter button, the first curtain opens, and then after the exposure time, the second curtain closes, and then when you advance, they reset. At 1 80th of a second, that's the fastest speed at which the first curtain opens, the entire film plane is open to light for a brief period, and then the curtain closes, and then you advance. At 1 500th of a second, the first curtain will open, and then the second curtain will come behind it, and it will start its travel before the first curtain closes. So if you were to use a flash with 1 500th of a second, you would at some point get this strip of illuminated image, and all the rest of the negative would be black having been covered by the shutter curtains. But if you're using a 15th of a second, let's say, first curtain opens, entire film plane is uh, open to light for about a 15th of a second, and then the second curtain closes. So anything slower than 1 80th, you can also use a flash with. So let's take a look inside the viewfinder here. And there we go, that helps a little bit. Let me get some light in here so you can see the screen. So there's the focusing screen and the viewfinder. And as you can see, or should be able to see, there's nothing in there, no meter, just a grid display 
that might help you see the grid display. Um, for because I have the grid focusing screen in here. If you want to use, there we go, the um, magnifying glass on this prism, you can, and that will help you achieve fine focus. Next thing we're going to talk about briefly is how to use the time shutter speed. And in general, basically, the, the print, it's done here on the uh, locking dial. You're going to set this to time, going to hit the, uh, the shutter, now, you're not going to be able to do anything until you take it off of time, and then you can advance the shutter. Let's see what's going on inside the camera when we do that. So there's our shutter. We're going to set this to time. That's not how that's supposed to work. There we go. You have to have the shutter dial set to bulb. That's the part I was missing. So when your, your shutter dial is set to bulb, you set the collar around the shutter button to time and now when you push the shutter release the curtain will stay open indefinitely as, until you tell it not to and you tell it not to by undoing the time setting on the collar now you can advance your film so time is really useful if you don't have a cable release that locks because you can use this instead of a cable release let's see if it works with the self timer Nope, it does not. It's worth checking. At any rate, so that's how, that's how time works. And uh, it's a very nice feature on this camera that I wish more cameras had retained over the years because uh, time is way, way, way more useful than bulb as a shutter speed. So now let's take everything that we've talked about here and let's go through the process of taking a photo with the camera. Now we're gonna pretend that we have a non-metered prism because we do. Whether you're using the, the waist level finder or the standard non-metered prism, um, since I don't have a metered prism to use to show you how to use it, we're not gonna cover that in this video. So with the, the non-metered prism, either you're gonna focus looking th down through the top here or through the back. You're gonna need a handheld meter or a, a light meter app on your smartphone or uh, just using the Sunny 16 rule to kind of eyeball your exposure. And what you're gonna do is set your aperture to whatever you feel like it needs to be and set your shutter speed to whatever you need it to be to obtain a proper exposure. Good thing to make sure we're advanced there. Next, you're gonna look through the viewfinder, find your focus. Okay, that looks good. Take your picture and advance. And that's how you take a picture. It's a really basic, very simple, very user-friendly process. To do a double exposure with the Nikon F2, it's not that hard, but it, this, this camera predates Nikon putting in double exposure capabilities into their cameras. So what you want to do, the mechanics behind it are you take your first picture, you hold down the film rewind knob, or the film rewind button and the film rewind knob and you advance your film. This will keep the film from moving while you rearm the shutter with the film advance. Then you take your second picture and advance it. Now after you advance your second frame, it's going to take a moment for the gearing to catch up so what will happen is your frame won't advance the entire way. It will only advance part way. So if you take another picture, you're going to overlap your next frame with part of your double exposure, which will ruin both of those images. So the next thing you do is put, not that one, not that one, put a lens cap on your camera, set it to a fast shutter speed and a tiny aperture, and then you take a dead frame. And that dead frame will ensure that your frame advances far enough, that your double exposure frame advances far enough that your next image will not overlap it and ruin both frames. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the science of the double exposure. Let's say that 1 1 25th and f5.6 is a proper exposure for a single frame. Okay. To do a double exposure, you need to have half as much light reaching the film. If you did two exposures like this, boom, boom, you would have twice as much light on that frame, which would make it a very dense negative or thick or dark, they're also called, because they're visibly darker than a normal negative. In digitizing photos, that will give you digital noise and low contrast. 
When you print it in the darkroom, that will give you low contrast and very long print times. So what you want to do is cut the amount of light in half for each exposure to get a proper negative. 1 1 25th and f5.6 you can cut in half two ways. With the aperture, going to f8 because that's a smaller, smaller opening. One stop is half as much light going up this way each time, or one stop going the other way is twice as much light. So if you're at 1 1 25th and f5.6, 1 1 25th and f8 is half as much light. I prefer to use aperture for creative control, so generally shutter speed is how I'm going to adjust for um, double exposures if I'm going to do a double exposure. To that end, we need half as much light coming through the shutter, which means half as long an exposure, which means going to, if you said 1 2 50th, you're correct, because these are fractions. So the higher the number, the shorter the time. So f5.6 at 1 2 50th is a fine way to get a double exposure, assuming the same lighting settings, using this camera, if your proper exposure is 1 1 25th at f5.6. Now that said, you don't have to take both exposures at the same time. So if you're going to take the first one and come back and do the other one the next day, that evening, oh, two weeks from now, whatever it is, however much light you need for that second exposure, just be sure to cut that amount of light in half and you'll be fine. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.